Hello everybody, MLD here, and this video is about all those juicy little rumors that is surrounding Xbox this week. Now, there's been no official news, but there's been no shortage of these wild rumors, which some are true, some uh, I, I doubt their credibility, but I'm just going to go through them all. I'm sure you've uh, seen content creators make videos on this, but this is again the perspective of a 100% Xbox fan who wants nothing but the best for Xbox and its fan base. So, I'll put the link, the timestamps in the description if you don't really care for my takes on certain topics. So let's just go from there. The first one is about Hideo Kojima and a possible collaboration with Xbox. This, I believe, is true. What it could be, I don't really know. It could be something as a publishing deal like Death Stranding was. It could be a Game Pass Day 1 deal, that, but it's still multi-plat. could be anything. But I do believe it's plausible because he's not tied to Sony. He's not married to Sony. If the price is right, he can make a deal with whoever he wants. And overall, I think Microsoft is looking for this because getting him would be a symbolic victory. It shows Xbox's commitment to Japan, but also it will pull the robbery on Sony. It it's really is a symbolic victory. It basically means that this guy's been making exclusives for PlayStation for the longest time, and now all of a sudden, he's making an exclusive, or whatever, for Xbox. And that is a win. Do I like his games? I'm not going to pretend. I don't really have a taste for his games. But I do recognize that he's, a poor, he's an important man. And millions of people do like him. And if he does do a deal with Xbox, it will bring more people, or at least more attention, to the Xbox brand. So I do see the greater good in doing this. And plus, there is a thing I like to call spite hype. It's where even though I don't like the game, I can still enjoy it because of all the saltiness it will cause PlayStation fanboys. Now, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll kidding aside. I do hope it happens. It, it does look like it will be a win for Xbox, if true. So, uh, moving on. Let's see, there's been a lot of rumors of multiple publishing deals that Xbox is working on. This, I believe, is true. I mean, look at last year. Ori uh, 2, Flight Sim, they each got Metacritic scores in the 90s. And that was in 2020 alone. It makes perfect sense to keep this momentum going because whatever games these guys scope out, they pick winners. And it's also good for just simple shock and awe tactics, like really fill every year with multiple games published from your first party studios, whatever you want. Whatever feeds the Game Pass beast, whatever keeps the conversation in Xbox's corner. More games in PlayStation, equals just more publicity, more victories for the fan base, and a bigger Xbox brand as a result. So what they are, I have no idea. But I do believe these deals are happening. So hopefully we'll see more of this pretty soon. Um, also, there's rumors with uh, Steam and Nintendo, some kind of collaborations with them. Uh, I'm, don't, I'm kind of iffy on this. Deep down, I really want this to be true because... I believe that uh, Game Pass on PC is by far the most untapped market for Game Pass. I think console Game Pass can only get Microsoft so far. If you really want numbers to explode, you gotta put Game Pass on Steam. Yes, it is on PC, but Steam users I find are, you know, stubborn. They don't like to really venture outside their Steam borders, but if you bring Game Pass within those borders, that could be a pretty big win and show uh, where the tides would be changing. Because, again, why do I care? It's very simple. The more subs you get, the more revenue comes in. And they use that revenue to, to make more deals and reinvest and so on and so forth. It's a, just a never-ending cycle of just growth. And that only benefits us. So, I hope that's true. Then you got Nintendo. And this, I'm a little more skeptical. Nintendo's very slow to collaborating with anybody, even people that they supposedly have a good relationship with. This could be something, uh, if I'm just spitballing here, this could be Master Chief on Smash Brothers around the time Halo Infinite launches, which might be great, that'd be great. Best case scenario, xCloud will go on the Switch. Now again, xCloud, not Game Pass, because xCloud is strictly streaming the games, so you do need the internet connection for uh, for the gameplay experience. So. It's not exactly the same as playing a game on your TV or what have you. Now, this would work because if Nintendo eventually adopts cloud technology, uh, Microsoft, in my opinion, I think I'm, again, I'm just spitballing, they could use uh, Azure and Microsoft can give them a good deal or 
now some kind of leverage to use Microsoft's cloud. And in return, you could use xCloud, you work out the details regarding the revenue sharing and whatnot, but if that could happen, that would be a slam dunk because I don't consider Nintendo to be competition. Yes, they're in the console industry, but they make games that are just a different appeal than what Xbox is making. I feel like the demographics, uh, they're not really clashing together like how Xbox and PlayStation gamers clash. That's my point. So I feel like being on Switch, xCloud, but not on PlayStation, that would, all, that would in the end benefit the Xbox brand. It would strengthen ties with you know two competitors and essentially create a party where PlayStation isn't invited. So that, that's the way I see it. So I hope that's true. Well, I guess we'll see. Uh, Persona and Battlefield 6 coming to Game Pass? Uh, I believe Persona will. I mean, that's only a matter of time. Phil Spencer, he's getting all these Japanese games on Game Pass. It's only a matter of time for Persona. I haven't played it before, but I'm looking forward to trying it. So here we go. Battlefield 6, that I'm more skeptical about. If anything, it's going to launch on EA Play. And I guess extension, it would launch on Game Pass because it merged with uh, Game Pass Ultimate. So that's probably how it would be if, you know, if I'm thinking about it right now. But that's really up to EA. If they really want like a guaranteed player base to compete with Call of Duty, they might actually just do that. Day one EA Play slash Game Pass Ultimate. So it's really up to EA. So I guess we'll see. Uh, I'm, I, I really doubt though, personally. But hey, nice surprise if true. And the final rumor was um, games like Everwild, Perfect Dark, and Fable being years and years away. And my response to that is, yeah, no shit. It's called staggering your releases. Xbox has so many studios, and I'm not even counting their publishing arm and all the other deals that they're going to make. Like, of course you want to stagger your releases. You got a lot of games coming this year. Well, yeah, I mean, you, get, you got in the summer, Grounded. I may forget some games here, guys. Bear with me. These aren't all the games I'm listing here. It's just off the top of my head. So, I mean, this summer you got what? Grounded. Psychonauts 2, yes, it's on PS4, but it's only on Series X. And then you got uh, Flight Simulator for console. Then you got Age of Empires 4 in the fall. Halo Infinite, of course. I strongly believe Forza uh, Horizon 5 will be this fall. Starfield could be either this year, late this year, or early next year. But either way, 2022, well, I mean 2021, we'll also have all these third-party deals like uh, Stalker 2, Exomecha, and uh, The Gunk, all these other games. But 2022, first party, you're going to have probably games like, again, Starfield, Wolfenstein 3, something from Arcane's second studio, uh, let's see, Forza Motorsport, the reboot, The Sim, not Horizon, uh, Avowed might come out uh, in, that, in that year, 2022, Hellblade 2, uh, Project Mara, and 2023, you'll have your Everwild, uh, Perfect Dark, uh, Fable, and you might have the other games from the staples, like Gears of War 6. Uh, it's software might release something. Um, again, there's so many studios. You, got, you need something every year. So when people say, the rumor mill says that these games are years away, yeah, you think? You can't put everything in one year. If Xbox gets at least, what, six games per year, I'm a happy camper. Would it be nice to have everything all at once? Sure. Like, I'm, I'm not denying that, but it is what it is. And I prefer these, these games turn out great. And there's plenty of games to play in the meantime. As I just said, those lists of games I just said. So I believe this rumor is true, but that does not mean that there's a drought. Again, that's why the, all those publishing deals are happening. Other games have started development sooner. So there's really nothing to complain about. There's games every year. So, I mean, that's all that needs to be said. I think I covered all the rumors, uh, at least all the rel relevant ones to me anyway. Either way, the fact that Xbox is all this going on, if even a quarter of these rumors are true, half the rumors are true, this is going to be the best generation Xbox has ever had. That's it. See you guys.